Insertion sort takes as input an array whose values are in an arbitrary order and it rearranges them such that they end up in increasing order. Insertion sort is a little bit like playing cards. In fact, it's very much like playing cards, since most people actually arrange their hand using insertion sort without even realizing it. Insertion sort is one of the simpler sorting algorithms. Despite being simple, it is practically useful, as it works very well on modern computers for small arrays, for which it may outperform algorithms with a better asymptotic complexity such as quicksort or merge sort. If you would like to learn more about these asymptotically better algorithms, click the links in the upper right part of the screen. Stay with this video to see an overview of how insertion sort works how to implement it in the C language, and how to compute its worst-case time complexity by using a graphical argument. Consider subscribing to the Truly Understanding Algorithms YouTube channel if you are enjoying these videos. Let us understand how insertion sort works. At each step of the algorithm, a prefix of the array is known to be sorted. We call this prefix the green segment. The other elements in the array are in an arbitrary order. The idea is to insert the next element into the green segment, at just the right position, so that the segment remains sorted. To implement this, we first copy the current element into a temporary location. We shift by one position towards the right all elements in the green segment that are larger than the current element. We place the current element in the position freed by the last element shifted. This increases the length of the green segment by one element. We repeat this insertion process until the green segment encompasses all elements, and the entire array is therefore sorted. Let us see how insertion sort works on our running example. Initially, the segment known to be sorted consists of just the first element in the array, which is obviously sorted. We keep track of the green segment by using a pointer, called, i. It points to the element just past the end of the green segment. Incidentally, this element is also the current element that we need to insert into the green segment. We store the current element in a temporary location. We should now shift the elements larger than the current element to the right. We keep track of the position into which to shift the larger elements by using another pointer, called, j. As long as the element just before j is larger than the current element, we shift it into position j and decrease j. Once j has finished iterating over all elements larger, we insert the current element. We forget about j, increase i, and repeat the entire process. Store 6 into the temporary location, shift 7 towards the right, insert 6 back into the array. Store 4 into the temporary location, shift 7 and 6 towards the right. Insert 4 back into the array. Store 3 into the temporary location, shift 7, 6, and 4 towards the right. Insert 3 back into the array. Store 8 into the temporary location. No elements are shifted, because 8 is larger than all elements in the green segment. Insert 8 back into the array. Store 1 into the temporary location. All other elements in the array are larger and therefore get shifted to the right. Insert 1 back into the array. The green segment encompasses all elements, and therefore the array is now known to be sorted. Let us implement insertion sort in the C language. We start with a function, called sort, which takes as input an array, called t, and its length, called n. We loop with the index i, remembering the size of the green segment. We store the element to be inserted, which is at position i, just after the green segment, into a temporary location. We loop over all elements larger than the current element, with the index j storing the position into which to shift them. The loop stops when the element just before j is smaller or equal to the current element, or, when we have finished shifting all elements in the array, and j therefore hits zero. Each element larger gets shifted by one position towards the right. We store the current element in the array at the position freed by the last element shifted. As we use the index j after the inner loop exits, we must declare j outside of the loop scope for the code to compile. Let us now try to understand the time complexity of insertion sort. Insertion sort has a worst case time complexity of big O of n squared. This can be seen by using a simple graphical argument. We will place a dot for each unit of time taken by the algorithm, and then count the dots to obtain the time complexity. In the outer loop, the index i goes from 1 up to n minus 1. We will represent the running time used for each iteration of the outer loop on its own line, for each value of the index i. The two declarations and the last assignment in the body of the outer loop take a constant amount of time. To account for this, we place a dot for each iteration of the outer loop. It remains to add dots corresponding to the inner loop for each iteration of the outer loop. 
In the worst case, the inner loop makes J loop from I all the way down to zero, without stopping early due to the second stopping condition. This means that the inner loop can have at most I iterations, with each iteration taking constant time. Therefore, we add I dots to account for the inner loop, and we do this for each value of I. The dots cover the entire upper right half of the n by n matrix, give or take one dot. This amounts to approximately n times n divided by two dots for the worst case scenario. As each dot represents one time unit, this makes the running time of the algorithm big O of n squared. Subscribe to the Truly Understanding Algorithms YouTube channel to stay up to date with our videos on interesting algorithms and data structures. Visit trulyunderstandingalgorithms.com to read a textual version of these tutorials.